It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So today I'm going to be doing a cursory, very light kind of look at two Pro Micros. So Pro Micros are actually a clone of an Arduino based board. Uh, it was originally, I believe, developed and designed by SparkFun. And you can still buy the original SparkFun Pro Micro. Um, I'm not 100% sure what they actually call it on their on their product site, but it's in the range of around 20 or so dollars. And of course, naturally, with things that are, you know, PCB electronics circuitry and whatnot, as long as you understand how it works and how it's designed, you could probably backward engineer it in some other way. And because of that, there has been a lot of clones of the the original SparkFun board, and they're called Pro Micros. Um, I'm not 100% sure what the actual SparkFun name is, but essentially it's just referred to as a as a Pro Micro. Now the footprints, the, the physical size, at least for the pins and the orientation of the pins, appear to be pretty much exactly the same, because it's a clone. It's designed to replace it. And these are devices which are typically driven off the Atmel 32U4 microprocessor. Now, I'm not a very sort of in-depth electronics kind of person, so if I don't have these facts and details 100% correct, please forgive me, and of course, provide those details in the comments below for anybody who's checking out this video, in case they're not 100% sure that what I'm saying is correct. I don't mind being incorrect and being corrected because that's of course part of learning and sharing with the community. Now, when all of this kind of stuff was kicking around, um, for most part, the first early generations of Pro Micros were actually on green PCBs. I do not believe that I've actually ever had a green PCB Pro Micro. Then came along the blue ones, and now there's actually black PCB Pro Micros. Putting that into context, the red ones are normally the actual original Spark Fund versions. So if you do end up with a sort of red Pro Micro, typically that's going to be your, your retail proper one, and then you've got your green, blues, and blacks. And we know that, for example, on the 40% Club, they've actually got a really great post article and a couple of other follow-ups that talk about, show off, and, and describe you know, the differences between them. And what's really important is that the green ones are not very suitable for supporting split keyboards because of the way that the power circuitry on board works. So I've been told, so that I've read. So today, I'm actually going to be comparing the blue and the black ones. I recently bought 30 of the blue ones from uh, AliExpress, and I used them down to very few left in my stock collection, just building, you know, macro pads and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then I thought, well, because of the local community and how long it can often take to actually get, you know, these kind of things shipped in from overseas, like on AliExpress, anywhere up to 48 business days, I thought I'd buy them in bulk and have them available for our local community if they were interested in getting them from me from a reasonable price, you know, very close to, to cost price. Or I can bundle them into kits or packages or giveaways and so on and so forth. So I got a 100 pack. So that's enough of me sort of just giving the, the background on them and let's check them out. So let's switch over to my desktop. Now what I've done is I've actually stacked a couple of boxes um, so that the, the actual platform is higher up so we can actually see what we're dealing with here a little bit easier. And so on this side is the blue Pro Micro and on this side is the black Pro Micro. You can see the packaging is practically exactly the same. It's just the anti-static bag with the same printing, same kind of, uh, you know, tear points and whatnot. And you'll see that they both come with their sets of headers. I'm going to pull them both out and then we can check uh, how they are. Now, if they don't have the same physical footprint, I'm going to be in trouble because then I'm going to have to find and develop or whatnot a different footprint for the black one. So let's uh, get some scissors because what I found is a lot of the time with these uh, seal packs, the tear point is actually too high and you still can't open the packet even though you've torn it at the line that they've suggested that you tear it at. So uh, that's a little bit annoying. Right, let's pull out the, the blue one and have that laid out there. And let's get the black one. This black one's been sealed well. 
so if I did tear it, it would have actually been okay, but the blue one was, was really horribly sealed. Uh, you can tell by the different kind of sealing crimps. So that's the black one, it's got a nice ripple pattern and you can see it ends quite high, whereas the blue one is just flat melted plastic, which uh, if you tore it across, it would have been uh, not very helpful at all. So let's pour out the black one and the header pins. So the header pins, you know, look pretty even, pretty equal, nothing terribly different about them. Uh, and we can have these side by side. So let's just butt them up against each other and we can see that their footprints appear to be the same width. And we can see that their footprints are uh, pretty much the same height, at least with the pin orientations, which is great. Now, I did actually uh, get my wife's plastic calipers here anyway, just for the heck of it, to see if there's any real discernible difference. And we're looking at 18 mil wide and 18 mil. So it's pretty much the same in that dimension. And just confirming that is 33 mil. And uh, that one's a little bit bigger. It's about 33 and a half. Okay, so about a half mil. Um, is it very noticeable to the eye? Barely, 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 barely noticeable. So that's just something to think about. If you've got tolerances that are so incredibly super tight, then uh, you might want to be aware of that. Now, the USB position is obviously the same. The heights are exactly the same. But the striking difference that might not show so easily on the camera because of the height is the silk screen is actually different and the chip orientation is different. We also can see that there are some components that are very different also. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and boost this height a bit more so we can see that a little bit better. There we go. Right, there we go. That's that's a little bit better. You can see on the blue Pro Micro, now I've got to find something to point with. Uh, we've actually got silk screen right next to the pins. So you can see the raw ground reset, VCC, and then you know A3, A2 all the way down, Pro Micro on the bottom, and then more of those silk screens on this side. But on the black one, the top surface doesn't have any silk screen around on the pin orientations. This is, I believe, also partly due to the fact that they're using a larger version of the 32U4 chip. So this is the small form and it's set at 45 degrees, whereas this is the larger version. I don't know if that's just because it's a cheaper chip for them to use, um, but it means that the actual wiring, the traces and the component layout is going to be slightly different. Up the top here, we've got a very similar layout with these five components across the top and their orientation, slightly different color components, but on the bottom, We've actually got a larger component, whatever that is. Maybe it's a, a power device. I don't know. I'm not a electronics PCB type of person natively. But down here, we've got a much smaller version of that gray box and different orientation of these other components, which you can see run down the side here to across the top and down, whereas they've kind of flipped that and condensed it to accommodate the fact that there's a bigger microcontroller. If we flip it across to the other side, um, you can just see traces with a little bit of aversion text on it and there is our silk screen for the actual pin orientation. So it's just something to be mindful in that if you need the reference points, um, you may want to set up your PCBs specifically for a particular type of Pro Micro. For example, on a lot of what I do, uh, here's an example of what I've been doing recently. So what I've been getting up to recently is uh, I've been starting to actually put the pin locations on the actual PCB with my designs just for ease so that you can see, you know, that's your column zero and column one pins. So when you come to actually creating your matrix and your pin orientations, you know what you're doing. However, uh, and you'll also notice that I've actually got orientations for both raw and transmit TX so that you set up your Pro Micro in the correct orientation. With this black one, because it's on the underside, you kind of lose some of that 
uh, lining up because if you put it with the correct orientation, you don't see that silk screen, which means you will have to figure it out beforehand and do opposites and go, okay, that's going to be that particular pin, that's going to be that particular pin, nerd it down and then put it on. That said, really interestingly, I saw Mr. Montgomery, I believe, uh, on Reddit the other day recommended that Pro Micros should be mounted this way so that when they're actually put on, the USB is actually wedged against the PCB so that it gives it physical support. And I thought, oh, okay, that's that's a pretty nifty way to think about it. But my only concern with that is if by doing so, you're actually going to get a lot of clearance for your switch pins and your diodes if you have them underneath the ProMicro, which in my builds, you typically will. Uh, that said, I don't know if uh, you're going to be able to get a lot of support because for example, if you put these headers on, I'm just struggling with this a little bit because it's an elevated position for me. There we go. I flip them around. Now, I typically build with the headers. I don't do the, you know, cut off diode leg method, which you can, and that'll help you get a reduced amount of clearance. Yeah, so that's that's just enough there. There's like a tiny gap. Um, but because of the components, traditionally, you know, I don't know if that's actually going to be enough clearance. Probably for the pins, maybe not so much for diodes. I'd have to actually put in a diode and check. Right, so that's what seems to be the majority of the differences between a black and a blue Promicro. You've just got silk screen for your pin orientation on the back. And of course, you've got different size components. I don't know how they perform electronically, if they're any better or less better, or if they're more reliable. Um, but in the interest of completeness, at least from a physical sense, what I've, oh, my apologies, I just bumped the microphone there. Um, I've got my scales, so I'm gonna put my scales onto the screen and we can hopefully see that display a little bit. I'm gonna tear it. So it zeroes out, and with the black one, we're looking at uh, 2.7 grams, 2.6 grams, they're about 2.6 something. And then with the blue one, 2.4. So it's a fraction heavier with that bigger chip as well. Right, that's pretty much it. Uh, nice and relatively short video for, for today. Um, Blue Pro Micro, Black Pro Micro, price is very similar, but I have been told that the black one in theory has been touted to be more reliable. Where to from here? Maybe there's going to be another revision and it could be a yellow Pro Micro or, uh, you know, there's a white Pro Micro. Any of these PCB uh, manufacturers or people who come up with these, it's their choice of what color silk screen, but of course the revision is entirely up to them and as long as you can tell the difference between them, then that's all good and you can get what you're after. Right, so if you're looking at buying a Pro Micro, just be aware that the different colors may have different features in both form, fit, function and uh, silk screen, so that's usability and that the green one is potentially going to be an issue if you want to use it for split keyboards. I haven't had an issue with any of mine yet. I haven't had any failures. I haven't had any of the USB sockets break off. Knock on wood. Um, so hopefully uh, everybody else will be able to have a similar good time experience. Although just looking at the back of the sockets right now, I've just noticed something really interesting. They've used slightly different USB sockets and you'll see that this blue one doesn't have this bit of metal like this black one does on the back. And what I'm talking about is just here in the middle, right? There's this little bit of metal that's bent down, whereas on the blue one, it doesn't seem to have it. So obviously they're using a slightly different uh, micro B plug connector, but obviously I would expect them to work the same. Whether that improves its durability or how likely it is to snap off, I don't know. Could not tell you for the life of me. Right, that seems to be uh, it. And I can't actually see what I'm doing because the boxes are blocking my screen. <laughs> so thanks very much for checking out the video. I hope you found it 
useful in some way or if it's going to alleviate your fears about buying a different colored Pro Micro or it'll help you steer away from buying a green one if you really need a blue one or a black one. Don't forget, you can always check out our podcasts found at www.thebodpodcast.com. We've got a Patreon page, we've got Instagram, um, and of course all of those avenues allow us to uh, present everything else out to the world. And if you'd like to support us, you can also hit us up at any of the avenues uh, that I've just mentioned. So thanks very much, and of course, as usual, until next time, happy clacking.